Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. I hope everyone's doing well today. Um, thanks for joining my webinar, um, talking about advancing your AP analytics through large language models and AI. So we're going to go through a lot of stuff today. I'm going to explain for those of you that are a little afraid of, of um, a little afraid of large language models and AI, like chat GPT type of things, we're going to explain how it works to help you understand that it's nothing to be afraid of, um, but also understand contextually how it can help us in the whole AP process, especially with like data entry. Um, let me introduce myself first. So my name is Ted McRae, as you can probably see from my name in the lower right hand corner and now presenting on the screen here. I'm the director of marketing over here at Makers Hub. And off and on in my career, uh, I've spent most of my career working with accounting professionals or financial professionals. So roughly about 30 years, even though obviously from my picture on there I, I and, and what you're seeing on the screen, I look nowhere near 30 years old and I'm kidding. But um, so let me give you a little bit of background about myself. So I started at companies like ADP Paychex way back in the day. Uh, and then I went to a, a company called Intuit, as you've probably all heard of. And I was a recycled employee with Intuit for, I don't know, roughly eight to 10 years. Worked for an even smaller company. And it was at the time I was employee number 15 at Zero US. Uh, uh, and I am a self-proclaimed technical nerd. I just love technology and everything that goes with it. Um, so I'm kind of a mix of, of both worlds. I, I've been in sales. I've done technology. I've taught myself to program, all sorts of stuff like that. So I'm really excited to share this with you. Um, but first of all, um, I, I work for a company called Makers, which I'm going to introduce to you. Um, but let's just go through an overview of what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to spend roughly about 45 minutes uh, in today's session. Uh, introductions, which I've already done. Um, I'm going to go through a Makers Hub overview, who we are, and why um, why this topic that we're talking about today, this co computer vision, AI, and large language models, actually um, is is like the backbone structure of our company. Um, and we're going to talk uh, about the manual grind of uh, of AP, especially in this pre accounting world, paying your bills, getting the details in. Um, and then we're going to really go into revolutionizing your accounts payable with AI and tech and, and how you can use it to do specific things. Um, and then we can talk about next steps, Q&A. If you have questions, um, I'm going to try to keep the chat panel open. So if there's questions, and I'm not sure if, if uh, the participants can, can chat or not, um, but we will have a QA section open at the end. I usually like to have an ongoing but, um, but that's fine. Okay, so let's get into just an overview of Makers Hub. So we're an AP platform. And if you take a look on the screen here, this guy in the, in the lower right-hand corner, his name is Fong No, And he is the, one of the co-founders of Makers Hub. And he probably, he has, he had some of the same issues that you all probably have when it comes to AP. He's standing in front of these vats right here, and, and he's actually an engineer by, by design, but um, he designed these vats right here, and they have about 10,000 to 20,000 parts per vat. And what he was finding is that when the actual bills would come in or the item receipts, the purchase orders would come in, um, it was the AP department was bogged down trying to enter in these 10,000 to 20,000 parts that went into um, creating these, these vats. So what would happen is the bills would come in, the AP department would sit down with the bill and now start typing in all of those items with the quantities received, the item prices, the total amount of the bill, the due dates and all of this stuff. And, it, and this is like where it was bogging down that whole um, that whole process, and it looks like um, we were able to um, to enable chat. So if you'd like to chat while the webinar is going, just let me know. But so it was bogging down this whole process, right? So what Fong did is he 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 went out and searched for a product that could scan every single bill, all the line items of the bill, 
and all the the intricate details like PO number quantities and all this stuff. But what he soon found out that there that is there was not really a product out there that could do that efficiently um, and uh, and accurately and all of that stuff because the OC products that are used in most of these uh, most of these AP products are all like the same four back end products and they're not just used for AP. So what did Fong do? He went out being the engineer that he is, he went out and he created his own and we call that wise vision technology. And this is where we, this is where we bridge that gap between the AI that I'm going to show you uh, and um, the AI that we have inherently in our in our product already so i'm going to show you exactly like some really cool stuff today i hope you find it cool so what our product really is is this is this computer vision technology and it and it's really different than ocr although it does scan it the same breaks it down into bits and bytes but we use a large language model to determine what it is so the way the way that when Fong was searching for an OCR product, the way OCR products truly work is it's hard programmed to search for specific values, right? So it goes through, it scans the bill and it looks for invoice and it scans the bill and it looks for due date and, and different varieties of that. What we can do with new technology and what we're gonna do today is scan the entirety of a bill and let large language models determine what that is. In, and, and then I'm gonna show you how we can index, index that stuff and, and really go in and, and do some pretty cool stuff with, with large language models. So that's the, um, that's the way that Makers Hub works. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it, but let's go in and talk about really what large language models are, right? So large language models, if you don't know already, they're, they're engineered to understand text like you would like I, I, you type in right and it breaks down what you're asking into into um tokens and then it puts those tokens back together and we're going to talk about this but it understands and now can reply to you just like a like you're speaking with somebody across the table right so it's it's used this it uses its like um simulated brain function to answer questions where it seems like it's it's a real person next to you. And um, <clears throat> there's a wide variety of large language models out there. Uh, we're going to be using chat GPT only because I find um, that that's the most reliable, even though like somebody pointed out to me on one of my last webinars, if you ask chat GPT how many R's there are in strawberry, it will tell you there's two. No, no matter how much you tell it there's three, it will insist that there's only two. So <laughs> some, things, some things are still in the works, but it's, um, but for the most part, this is the most reliable product that we're gonna use. So let's go in and talk about how these, how it actually understands um, what you're teaching it. So this is how large language models work. The so large language models are obviously trained by ginormous data sets and Going back in time a few years ago, um, they couldn't even access the internet. So it was really only like what it had programmed since I think it was 2019. So anything prior, even if you asked it like who the current president is, it wouldn't have any idea. Now it can go out online and research and do, and do all these other things for you. But the backbone of the um, large language models is the neural networks. And those are what are designed to stimulate the human brain learning process. And then we get into tokenization. So if you've ever written a prompt in like a chat GPT, this is um, what the tokenization where it really works. It's breaking down the text into smaller bits and units, uh, tokens, and it analyzes those tokens. And then contextual understanding, it puts those tokens back together where they should be. So it almost breaks down a sentence like we learned in, in uh, like fifth grade to and, and then put it back together so it understands the bits and pieces of that sentence paragraph or whatever you're writing. So let's take a look at, at <clears throat> examples in an AP world of what tokenization actually means. So an example in this context of the bill is due on July 30th. Tokenization is the process of breaking that sentence down into individual units or quote unquote tokens. 
So, uh, so what it does is it's breaking it down. So the original sentence, the bill is due July 30th, tokens it out as the, and then bill is due July on July 30th. So now um, it does this regardless of how large the, um, the, the paragraph is. It's breaking down these sentences into smaller little bits and pieces. So then what it can do is put them back together to where it makes sense. And this is context uh, or contextual understanding. So context understanding involves interpreting the meaning of each token. And then, and then based on the surrounding words, it helps the model understand your specific, the specific thing that you're trying to convey to it. So we can respond with the correct answer. So in this example, the bill indicates the specific document, right? Like an invoice or, or, or something like that. So when I'm typing in, please examine this bill, it's gonna put this, this bill um, to, together as one context. And it knows it's probably something that I'm uploading. Um, and, and then is due, obviously that as you would, as you think and, and read things, it's the exact same way that these large language models are doing is due suggests an obligation, right? And then um, on the 30th, it obviously suggests a deadline or a due date. So that's what it does. It pulls it apart in tokens and then puts it back together so it can understand exactly what you're talking about. And this is how, when we go into this now and, and I show you how this is working, this is um, this is something to think about because I'll kind of be referring back to to this a tiny bit. So let's like take a look at the, a practical application in, in document processing. And so the role of the the large learning model in document processing is to extract this key information from unstructured text, right? Because if you think about like a bill, bills are like snowflakes; they come in all shapes and sizes, especially with new technology and and all new accounting and ERP type um, uh, uh, softwares out there. These bills can come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Your client can, or your, your vendor can change them on the fly now. They're not so structured as they used to be. And so now it makes it even harder when you're using just an old fashioned legacy AP type model or OCR type model to actually understand what's inside of these bills. So um, <clears throat> computer vision now can extract certain points, uh, data points, and we can tell what those data points are. Oops, sorry. We can tell what those data points are because the, the large language model actually understands what is what within a, within a uh, bill of slash invoice. Um, so we can now extract out line items. We can have it add the line items for us. We can we can do all sorts of things, which I'm going to show you when we get into the actual um, demo of this, which is realistically right now. So let's demonstrate the reading and and extraction capabilities of a large of a large language model. So I'm going to go into not my settings. Sorry, I'm going to go into. Just give me a second here. This reframe. And what we're going to do is pull out a couple of images here. And what I'm going to first want to do is I'm going to pull out images and I'm going to let a large language model determine what those images are. So I go into chat GPT here. If you've ever, if you ever want a, a, an awesome um, AP or AP AI product that you can just ask questions, perplexity is an awesome one as well. And that's what the, that's what this other tab is. Just so you know, perplexity, you can, it's just really, it's not for creating things. You can almost ask it anything you want and it's going to reply on how to do it. I even ask it sometimes like, how do I do a specific thing in, Quick, in QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop? So anyway, that's beyond this the scope of this, but. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ex uh, have it extract this picture of Half Dome. And I'm gonna just ask it, please describe this picture or this image in detail. And I always say, please, because if AI ever takes over the world, I'm hoping that at one point they're gonna like say, oh, you know, Ted's the really nice guy that always said, please, so let's not enslave him. But I'm gonna say, please describe this image in detail. So I'm gonna pull this image up. And obviously this is Yosemite, right? This is Half Dome. 
It has a bunch of people standing here. The sky is completely clear and, and, uh, and nice looking. So here we have it. This Im image captures a stunning view of Yosemite National Park. Oh, <laughs> my session has expired. Uh, let me log in real quick, sorry. I'm not sure why I did that. It's never done that to me before, but let's go in and take care of this real quick. Sorry about that, y'all. Okay, so this image, um, it, it says everything about this image, right? The foreground, the middle ground, um, the, the lush greenery, the, it, what's in the sky. This, the sky is clear with a brilliant blue tone suggesting the photo was taken on a bright sunny day. So how does it do this? Does it actually look at the picture? Does it view the picture like you and I would view the picture? And the answer to that is no. It breaks it down into bits and bytes um, and then puts it back together so so in its its own language, right? So it can understand what's in here. It doesn't actually view the picture like a human brain views it or the human eye views it. So I just thought this was really cool to, to explain the difference between like computer vision with large language behind it, um, opposed to just a regular old OC OCR, right? So OCR is just gonna look for specific things and put those up. So think about it like this. If I, if I programmed a um, chat GPT to only be able to understand butterflies, and um, it, all it knew were butterflies and the plants that butterflies like. If I were to upload this picture of, of um, Half Dome, it would basically tell me, I have no idea what this is because it wasn't. it's not a butterfly. It's looking for a specific thing. So that's how OCR works. It's looking for specific values instead of just reading it and then, and then learning and understanding what it is. So let's take this a step further then. Let us now upload a bill like a this this invoice here. Okay, I'm going to show you this invoice um, because it's got some really um, strange things that are happening within this invoice. So we have the obviously all of the information from the from who it's going to, who it's sold to. If we look at the bottom, it has the the actual vendor. So this is, you know, this is our information where we're selling it to. All the customer PO, project name, who it was ordered by. And then most importantly, we have this detail in here. So look at this detail though. We have the SKU number, which is kind of truncated within the description. So an, even if we were to utilize a AP platform that could pull out this, the, the, some of the line items, it would probably not be smart enough to determine what the SKU numbers were because it doesn't have any contextual like uh, learning to understand like, hey, these items are probably the SKU number. All right, so then within here, we have the quantity kind of truncated as well or overlapping with the description, which is probably in most cases gonna mess up um, a, a product like a, a, a line item type product. And then the last thing I want to point out on this bill, because we're going to talk about this when I upload it into ChatGPT, is this order value discount. This bill to me is weird because the order value discount, the only place I can see that there's a discount is in this description. It's not reflected in the total price of, the, of uh, what I'm getting. It's only here in this in the description. So if we take a look at the bottom of this bill, all right, here's what we have. In my world, doing AP and, and knowing finance, I would think that the total would be the total amount of all the line items added together. Then what you would have here is maybe a discount um, field that shows $509 and some odd cents. And then the total invoice, right? You would have the you, somewhere it would let me know that hey, I got five hundred nine dollars and and forty two cents or whatever it is in this order value discount. But nowhere on this bill does it say that. So when we're entering this bill, we have an invoice total of twelve thousand two hundred and thirty two dollars. We have a, a cost per uh, per item in here as well. 
But what we don't have, if we were to add everything together, we don't have the correct price of of all the inf of the actual product. Okay, so um, something to think about because there because if we want the true cost of goods sold, and we don't have the discount on there, depending on how you're doing your accounting, that's not really going to help us because because we actually got a discount that's not shown anywhere on this invoice. So I think I've. I think I've beaten that dead horse about this invoice. But so what we're going to do now is I'm going to upload this invoice into a, a large language model like chat GPT. And I'm going to say, <clears throat> please again, right? Because we don't want to be enslaved when the AI takes over. Um, extract all the details of this bill including vendor information, bill information, and line item detail including SQ, S, uh, SKU numbers. Okay, so let's just do that first. So what it's going to do now is it's 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 reading it, and it didn't read what I wanted it to. So let's do please extract all detail from this bill, including line item detail. So let's see what happens. There we go. Oh, that's a little better. Okay, so as you see, I didn't say please extract the invoice number. I didn't say please extract the total. I just said extract everything. So what we're doing now is now we can create and contextualize every single thing that's within this bill. So as we as we look at here, um, I have my line item details, item one, it goes into item two. So now, if we think about how this is working, the, the actual data that's being extracted is, is 100% accurate because it's only extracting, um, it only extracts uh, everything. It doesn't, I should say this, it doesn't just extract what I'm telling it to, like specific little things or looking for specific things and then getting it wrong. It is extracting everything. And now I can say, give me, the SKU number, give me, add the quantity up of everything that you have. And I can do all sorts of other things because now I have all of this data at my fingertips. So if you remember, I said that there was an order value discount in there. So what I'm going to tell chat GPT to do now is please add or please sum the line item, um, the line items, Total, total price. So now what it's going to do is it's going to take the total price. It's going to add those together. Let's scroll down so we can see it. Um, and then I'm going to have it compare it to the, to the bill total. All right. Um, as soon as it does this, the sum of the line items is $12,742. So now I go, hmm. If I were an AP, if I were an AP manager, and I'd be like, why is the sum of the line items different? If I was this, if it was the first time I was looking at this bill, why is it different than the actual bill total? So I can ask it, why do you think the line item totals are different? and the bill total. <clears throat> so now it's gonna go through the difference, it, uh, uh, the line item, it could be due to, and it's telling me right here, there's a, there's a mention of an order value discount of 4%, which might not have been applied to each line item to provide the totals, but would be reflected in the overall invoice total. Okay. 
So there it is. That's probably, if I were a smart guy, I would probably think that's, that's it. I'm going to take 4% of the total and see if that equals $509. Um, so um, that, if you think about that now, I've done a lot of work to, to get that, to get all of that, just to find out that there's an order value discount. Uh, and I can say, would you like to, me to recalculate considering the order value discount to verify that's the difference? I can say yes. And let's see what it says. Um, but but if I were the average AP person that just does data entry, I may not know all of this. Um, so after applying, the total is which matches the total invoice. So now we know exactly why there's that difference. We have all the line item details. We have everything that we that we could possibly need. So what do we? What can we do with Chat GPT now? I could create a G, what's called a GPT, and I can pre-program everything into this GPT, and I can upload multiple bills into the into the GPT or into the chat, and have it do this for me every single time. Take all the line item details, okay? Take look at the difference and actually tell me if there are any discrepancies within there. And then I can have it automatically export it into um, a file, the file format of my choosing, which is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do the GPT. I'll show that to you. But now I can say, please export the vendor, the vendor details. Um, line item uh, or invoice details and line item details into an Excel spreadsheet and set it up like you would a database using sheets as tables. So watch what it will do now. And I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna open this up for you to, to take a look at, at what it actually what it actually does. And then we'll go into this GPT um, of, uh, of, of how you can actually do this automatically. Um, so it's analyzing, it's going to do its whole thing. It's going to pull it all out. Um, and, and realistically, if you've, if you've never used and you're, and you're not as familiar with chat GPT as like, is like I am, um, it's very simple and everything. And I do, a, I actually do a webinar on, on chat GPT for 101 and, and 201 that actually can help you with these things. But just think of it as like, when you go in there, what do you want to achieve and then if you if you tell the system what you want to achieve um, at that point, uh, it will it will it, it will basically if you if you start with the end in mind, it's going to be a lot easier to help with chat GPT. So let's take a look at this um, this Excel spreadsheet and see what um, uh, chat GPT has done for us. And then I'm going to show you how we can export it. If any of you are, are familiar with my with SQL or something like that. Um, we're, I'm going to show you how that will work too. So here's the vendor information tab. Here's the in the invoice information tab. So I could actually, if I uploaded multiple invoices, right, it would pull out all of that information for me. So I have my invoice, my project name, my customer PO, the whole deal. And then based on what we said, I have the SKU numbers and all of that stuff. Now I could have said, hey, Make sure that you create a key in a, a, a key in here so we can use it as a database. Um, but so here's all the information that I have by vendor information, invoice total. So these types of things we could use to import, to export, to do all all sorts of crazy things that we want to do now. But let's go in, let's go back in. And now I can say this is great. Can you now? create an SQL database and create keys to use as identifiers. 
I know I spelt that wrong, but okay. So let's see what it does now. So it should create the code for me to create um, an SQL database. So if you're any in, any familiar with SQL, or you have um, and you or you have programmers in your company that have this type of stuff, you could just now hand them here. You go. Can you uh, import this into the SQL database? And it's going to create everything for them, um, in, in, which you'll see in a few seconds here. So these are some of the really cool things that we can do. I could upload, you know, multiple bills at the same time. The only thing that ChatGPT doesn't do very well is if you have a bill like this, and this is something that we do very well within Makers Hub, but if you have a bill that is, let me see if I can find it here. This Home Depot bill, this Home Depot bill has um, over, it's got like, it's a 68 page file, right? It's got 63 bills within the file. Um, so there's, it, it, you know, you have multiple bills, page one of two and just page ones. And it has like 4,000 line items within here. The one thing that ChatGPT doesn't do, but you you would have to go in and, and, and do some pretty extensive language um, in there is, is be able to tell the difference between one bill to the next, invoice number and, uh, and, and vendor and all that other stuff. So that's something that um, we can do obviously at, at Makers Hub, but ChatGPT just has a really difficult time. Okay, so let's see. So here's, um, here's the SQL database. It's actually created the database for us that we can now um, use. Um, can, can you show me the code? I'm going to say, can you show me the code? So that's, here's a complete code. So you could just copy and paste this and give it to your, and give it to your, uh, your guy, or you could just use the database that it created. It's really cool how it can do this. See, it's creating the, the invoice ID. So it's got a primary key. It's got all that really, really cool line item details, primary key. So that's because I asked it to create a key so it knows where these different things are. So let's go back in. Now that we've done that, I'm going to open up my accounts payable GPT. I hope. I'm going to just stop it. Okay, accounts payable GPT. I'm not sure why oh, it hasn't stopped yet, I bet. Okay. That's strange. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, refresh. <laughs> All right. I'm hoping everyone can hear me still. It might be an uh, internet issue that I have on my side. Um, but okay. So the GPT, what I've done, and if you're familiar with what GPTs are, they're little saved. Uh, chats where you can tell it what you want it to do all the time. So all of that stuff that you and I sat through and did on our own, we can create now a GPT that would actually, all I have to do is upload a bill and it would, and it would automatically extract all of that information for us. So not sure what's going on with uh, chat GPT or my, in, uh, my internet on there, but let's take a look. Oh, here we go. Now it's working. Okay. So here's my accounts payable. GPT. And all I need to do is on this one, I'm going to upload just a regular old bill like the CR Lawrence bill into my GPT. I don't have to tell it anything because I've already explained to it what I want it to do. And it's going to go, I've extracted the following details for this invoice. And so I've told it exactly what I want it to do. Um, and I don't have to actually do anything. All of that stuff that we did in the other one. So it's giving me all the line item details. I could have it um, look for any discrepancies, like I said. So additional notes. See, it's giving me all the additional notes, discrepancies. All calculations seem to be correct. Would you like to upload another document or expo export the most recent? And now I could just up upload as many as I wanted, or I can say, please export. And I've already told it to export to Excel. Or, or SQL, sorry. So now look at the vendor table information. It's it's uh, it's going to export all that stuff for me. So I've done it really quickly, and you can just upload bill, upload bill, upload bill, upload bill, and have it and have it do all of this for you, and then extract the data. So 
Uh, now, see, it says exporting now. Um, and I'm just going to hit yes. For, uh, yes, I don't know why it did that. Yes, export. Let's see if it'll do it. There might be a problem. Anyway, um, I, oh, I think I had it just export automatically. So that's how that works. If you needed to go in and adjust that, that GPT, you could go into explore GPTs. And then you can go into my uh, GPTs and then uh, and then export it. So really cool stuff, very nerdy. But let's go back into PowerPoint now. And let's talk about why this like, so what now, right? So this is really cool that you can do all this stuff. What, do you, what now? I mean, is there, I, I can do this cool stuff. I can export it out. Maybe you can import it to your, your ERP or your accounting system. But so, but, but what now is that you don't have to actually type this data information in. You can use either like a, a large language model or even like what we have is a, um, it's, it's already done for you. But now, the, so, but, so here's the what now. The manual nature of a data entry can be gone if you really spend the time if you spent as much time in or, or creating a chat GPT um, uh, uh, session as you do entering that 68 page document, you could have this pretty well squared away and done. But what we can do now is take that time consuming process and basically turn it into no time at all. Um, we can relieve the high potential for errors. And now what we can do is, 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 basically delete the inefficiencies and bottlenecks. Remember, we, I was talking about Fong and the bottlenecks that the, that the AP department had. Um, that's why he created Makers Hub to get rid of those inefficiencies and bottlenecks. So now you can get this information in. Um, and so let's take a look at the role of, of the computer vision, because now you can get it in, you can do this data extraction, you can reduce errors, um, and now you can, you can create workflows and approval processes based on so much more than just total dollar amount. You can get the the paper off of your desk and 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 you know give your fingers a little break um, by doing it um, within a, a chat GPT or even like what we do. So I'm going to go in and we've taken now this whole everything that we just talked. <clears throat> excuse me, everything that we've just talked about in the last. 35 minutes we've taken in makers up. So let me explain to you how this actually works. So the, you scan your data, our, our internal large language model that we have specifically for AP scans thousands of data points, just like we did with chat GPT in this session. Okay. And we extract and then index all of this information and we contextualize it like I showed you, we'll tokenize it and then put it all back together. We don't look at, oh, extract invoice, extract this until after the entirety of the bill has been extracted and analyzed. Then for instances where we can't determine what it is, then we go out to the internet and ask um, a large language model that's based on the world to to see what this might be so let's just say um we can't figure out what a uh, a skew number is with our internal model we'll go, go out to the one that we've used thousands of times because we, it just keeps learning as we use it and tell it can you look at this and tell us what exactly that is then the last step um, is we'll ask the user so the user can train the model um, with the UI. So let's just say, for instance, especially with that Belie Mobile, it had the correct PO number. But let's say we wanted to use that project name, which was like Brooklyn UVs, I think was the project name. We can now tell it, hey, you got it correct, but I want to use the Brooklyn UV as the um, PO number instead of the, the PO number that the company uh, uses, because that's how I tie it to my ERP system and all that stuff. So this is how we can get to almost 100% accuracy is with the adaptive learning. So if the model doesn't recognize something, 
or misses something, then we can tell the model, hey, search for surcharge in, within the bill that you extracted the thousand points of, of data and, and use the surcharge here instead. So this is how it works. And this is how new technology can really, really revolutionize the way that you do things. So people always ask me like, why haven't you, why haven't the, um, in, why hasn't the industry done this already? And, and realistically, um, they're using it. If you think about like an AP product, like Amelia, Topalthy or Bill.com, they've spent so much money and especially like a Bill.com, they've been around for so long. Their database is set. Can you imagine trying to redo an entire database for your, for all of your clients um, and, and get all the different fields correctly together and tying all this in it, it, it's enough to, to like take your company back um, uh, you know, 10 years basically before you start going, before you start going forward. The other reason is most of these companies just want you to pay the bill because that's where they make the money. They don't care about this pre-accounting, but we, this is the most important stuff is that data within there. Um, that's like can help make or break a company. And then why else? The complexity of these bills, like, like I discussed before, bills are completely like snowflakes. They're, they're complex um, and they and they're ever changing, and um, and and really because the way some of these struct th these companies use, like I said, the same four OCR products, they're very in inflexible and rigid. And so, getting back to why they haven't evolved, basically, like I said before, bills are extremely hard. They're very very hard. So we'll we'll take a look at like this that that sixty eight page Home Depot bill. How do you train a product? to upload 68, uh, 68 page file, know where the, the invoice ends and the next one begins, extract all the line item data. If you're a, a company that's already been doing this for 15 years, right? Cause you're, you're rigid and, and structured. Some bills are like this Belima one, but that um, we can extract no problem at all in Makers Hub, but other companies are, ext it's extremely hard. So like, you have the Brooklyn UVs, maybe you wanna change that. You have everything truncated with the quantity and all that stuff that we talked about, the order value discount. There's just so much detail that breaks systems. And then some are like, like this one, it's like the kitchen sink where you have multiple bills, some receipts, some other stuff in one file, right? So if you don't have a system that can recognize the difference or even read handwriting, because now that we use computer vision, we can read handwriting as well and get all that information in. So that in, in a rather large nutshell is how you can use AI to do this um, within, within the structure of, of, of what you're doing right now, uploading your bills, pre-programming pre it to do things, and then being able to export all of that information for you um, we do all of this already at Makers Hub with our awesome product, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it open. I know we were supposed to only go for 45 minutes. I think it's been almost exactly 45 minutes. I'm gonna hold it open for QA. But listen, if you want to get a free version of Makers Hub, use your telephone. Uh, your telephone I sound like I'm from 1940s. Use your phone, and you can scan the QR code right there, it's gonna take you right to the, the free trial sign up. You can try it for free, drop your invoices in and uh, and go from there. Um, and and I, you're gonna love it actually, it's, it's, it's amazing. So that's it, that's my entire, that's the entirety of my, uh, of my presentation. <laughs> I can also be reached down below here at tmcgray at makershub.ai and if you'd like to know more, like get in a conversation about some of the things that we talked about, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about um, about chat GPT, about makers of whatever you want to do as far as technology is concerned, or go over any questions that you may have. So um, in a nutshell, there you go. That's the full presentation. I hope everyone uh, uh, had a wonderful time. I appreciate your time.